Hello and welcome. Today we're working on Chapter 8, Accounting for Receivables. If you're new here, my name's Jeff from Finally Learn, and your likes and your comments and your subscriptions, all that is very helpful. So if you have questions, put it in the comments below. Here's where we are in our financial accounting chapters. We're in Chapter 8, so this video is going to be the intro and give you kind of the idea of what happens in accounting for receivables. I've got articles, videos, playlists, so if this is helpful. Make sure you watch the next video and follow along. Now, let's talk about accounting for receivables. You know receivables are promises to pay from another entity, so we have the right to collect money. And so receivables are assets on the balance sheet, and there's several types of receivables. The big two in this chapter are accounts receivable, or sometimes called trade receivables, and notes receivable. And then you have other receivables. I pulled one, for example, like interest receivable. Now, accounts receivable are current assets because they're typically due 60 to 30 days or something like that, and they're not due over 12 months. Notes receivable could be a three-month note, a 12-month note. Those would both be current or it might be a two-year note, and that would be uh, non-current or long-term. And then, of course, interest receivable would be uh, a short-term uh, current asset. Now, let's look at uh, ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil um, obviously is an oil company, petroleum company, and on their balance sheet, they have accounts receivable that's current of $33 billion, and they have some allowance for doubtful accounts. We'll talk about that in just a minute. 168 million is they think that will not be collected. And then they have net accounts receivable. These are all current assets of $32.8 billion. And then they have some receivables that are non-current, so like notes, $6.9 billion. So we're talking about lots of receivables for companies that, that have receivables. All right, so here are our topics for receivables. We've kind of defined receivables up above, and here's what we're going to do today. I'm not going to work any problems, just kind of give you the definitions. So let's talk about the accounting for bad debts. Now, not all receivables will be collected, so we've got to handle bad debts. There's two different ways to do it, the allowance method and the direct write-off method. And in the allowance method, there's two ways we estimate. So let's get on down to the topics here. So for accounting for bad debts, we know that some accounts will not be collected. And we call them either bad debts or doubtful accounts or uncollectible accounts. Now these are assets, but if you don't collect them, then it's no longer an asset and you have to write it off. You write that off as a bad debt expense or uncollectible account expense. Um, and so this is the write-off and we have to measure that now, GAAP requires us to measure ahead of time. So there's two methods to account for bad debts. The first method is called the allowance method. The allowance method, we required by our financial accounting rules, GAAP, to do the allowance method. And what we're saying is we know that we're making sales on account, and some of the accounts will not be paid. We won't find out maybe for six months or nine months in the future so we have to estimate now. So we estimate in the current year before the debts are uncollectible. Now this is called the matching principle or the matching concept where we're going to match the revenues with the expenses that it took to produce the revenues. Now there's two ways we can estimate the allowance method. The first way is called the percent of sales. We just take the sales and we think, well, maybe 1% or half percent. We come up with some percent based on our history, based on the economy, based on you know, thinking about what kind of credit terms we're offering. So one way we estimate the bad debt expense is by percent of sales. So the percent of sales, since it looks at the income statement number, then it's deemed to be an income statement approach. So the percent of sales calculates the bad debt expense. Now the percent of receivables calculates a different amount, but the percent of sales 
That's the number. So if we calculate the number to be 300, then that's our bad debt expense. We make the journal entry. Now, percent of receivables is deemed to be a balance sheet approach because we're looking at the receivables directly. And sometimes this is called aging the receivables. And so if we take a percent of receivables, maybe 5% of receivables, then that gives us what's called the allowance account balance. Now, remember, we're estimating now people that may not pay or companies that can't pay in the future. We're not writing off any accounts right now. In the year we make the sale, we wait. We know that in the future, there's going to be um, accounts that need to be written off. Now, this is the gap method. The allowance method is required for our financial statement purposes. But tax purposes, they don't allow us to do the, the allowance method they only require the direct write-off method. They don't want us estimating ahead of time what our expenses might be. They say you can't estimate, but if an account is uncollectible, we'll let you take that deduction, which is like an expense. So the direct write-off method is really easy. There's no estimate. And so we can just make that entry when we find a bad debt. All right, so last little thing we wanna do here is let's talk about the journal entries for bad debts. The journal entries for bad debts, if we're on the allowance method, we're going to make two entries. The entry to estimate bad debts for the current year, we're going to say bad debt expense and allowance for bad debts. Bad debt expense is an expense account, goes on the income statement. Allowance for bad debts is a contra account that goes with receivables. Think about what we know about ExxonMobil up here at the very top. They have accounts receivable less allowance for doubtful accounts, allowance for bad debts, allowance for uncollectible accounts. All that means the same thing. So we typically call that the allowance account. So when we're looking at that account, then that is a contra account that reduces accounts receivable. All right, so we have bad debt expense and allowance. When we find an account that is uncollectible in the future, in nine months from now, a year from now, somebody won't pay, can't pay, whatever. We write off bad debts in a future period and we say allowance for bad debts and then account receivable. So finally we write off that account. Now under the direct write-off method, there's one simple entry. We just make a debit to bad debt expense and we credit the account receivable. All right, our next video, we're gonna work a couple of examples so you can see how this works, but you need to have a good idea of, of where we're trying to go with bad debts with the allowance method and the direct write-off method. We've got several uh, examples in the video, uh, our next video, so check in the link below.